Well, you talk about McGregor's hairline there and having a hair transplant. He's recently, he's on the comeback, I guess. His uh, talks have been on the UFC 300 card. <laughs> he snapped his leg in half and he got very, very big. So has he been on the special sauce? Oh yeah, it? he's been on the HMS good shit, 100%. <laughs> I, think, I think he'd even agree to that. And do you know what? If you're coming back from an injury, why wouldn't you? I'd be like, give me everything while I'm out the testing window. But the thing is, do you see him get on the mic at that event of the weekend? He was like, Dana, I was supposed to fight in December. Then you said it was supposed to be April. Like they're not picking him for fights. And, you know, like even, um, do you see Volkanovsky had, he took a fight on 10 days notice yeah, and got head kicked and knocked the fuck out. And then in the press conference, he's a bit like, you've got to keep me active. This guy's one of the most decorated fighters of all time. And he's kind of saying like, please give me fights because these guys go crazy without yeah. them. And I think Connor medicates with drugs and alcohol because he's been geared up, in my honest personal opinion, quite heavily. Like, and you see his jaw going a little bit, a little bit of that. What's concerning? Geared up in what do you mean? That cat's like steroid gear or like- Cocaine. Right, okay, right. Like you can, in my personal honest opinion, you can <laughs> see it. And even in Saudi Arabia, I'm like, mate, did you get some of that shit out there? Like if anyone could do it, it'd probably be him, right? Yeah. And- yeah, he's, you, there's there's enjoying yourself. There's having time away from it. There's making a billion pounds or euros from your uh, whiskey and you and you get like a, your uh, Ford Star Stout, which is actually really nice. Like I went to his pub in Ireland. It's a good pub, isn't it? The food's amazing. The food is amazing. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're a black burger there. That's meant to go there. But then you told me it was in a fucking tip. You told me it was in like a really bad area of town. No, nah, I don't know if it is or it isn't. We got dropped off by a taxi driver. We went, yeah, it's a bit rough around here. It looked like it was next to like I, a little well, or something or like a one stop. Every taxi driver we went with said that Conor McGregor's a cunt and it's a bit rough. Well, but it's not just like a statement of fact. <laughs> right, like, anyway. But, but yeah, like um, he definitely was on the source. His comeback, just every month it goes, he's already out of it a little bit. And he he kind of fucked his own career when he came away from UFC to fight. Um, uh, fight Mayweather. Mayweather, yeah. yeah. And then he was so inactive for such a long period of time, it's very difficult for him to come back. How can he even possibly come back, right? You know, if he's been out of the game for that long and he's been injured, but like how how far mixed martial arts advances in such a short period of time? Like, the, how is he going to hold? I don't, I don't think he holds with anybody anymore. No, and it's, it's kind of sad. All of us in our hearts, we want to see him come back and bang someone out and, you know, like a Jose Aldo fight yeah. or something like that. But yeah, you kind of... You've got, I think you've got sympathise with him a little bit on the class eights because, so we had Paul Smith on the podcast. Do you know Paul Smith, the Scouse comedian, Ginger Air? Saw the episode, don't know him. Right, so he has toured arenas, you know, he's like the highest highs, he's on stage and he's giving people the best night of their lives. And then he goes over and like sits by himself in his house. Sits and cries in his hotel yeah, room. and he goes like, he said, you like comedians use drugs and alcohol to try and just soften the blow. Imagine selling out Madison Square Garden, you know, double champ, whatever you want to... Yeah, but that's like all to do with like being level headed. Like you can't, you have to be able to recognize that you can't spend your whole life like buzzed off your fucking you can't luck, be, can you? Surely you can't be a world champion and be level headed. It's, called, can, it's called gold medal depression. So most people that get a gold medal become depressed afterwards because you've worked so long to get something. I guarantee you've had this, right? I bet your silver play button was more of a happy experience than your gold one. It felt like, it probably felt like more of an unlikely accomplishment at 100,000. Like I popped a bottle of champagne when I hit 100k. When I hit a million, I had a balloon and I was like, oh, it's a bit underwhelming. You know, at least YouTube sends you something. When you hit it on TikTok or, you know, hit it on Insta, there's nothing. And it's, it's weird because also Conor McGregor, this is one thing that maybe I'm wrong on this, but say you're a millionaire, billionaire, or whatever, a lot of your life is still the same. You know, fair enough, you can get a private jets, but you have the same iPhone, same Netflix, same TV shows. You sit in the same traffic in London, whether you're in a Maybach or a fucking Uber. Like a lot of life is the same. You're still going to get jet lagged going to Australia, whether it's private jet or a plane, whatever. But when I look at like really, really wealthy people, sometimes I think, fuck, McGregor bought a Lamborghini yacht and he's probably already bored of it. Like once you have everything you could ever have wanted in life, now what? Like I feel like being too successful can be a curse for people because then where are you going to seek happiness when you can afford anything? Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that. I think a level of it, though, is surely, like, being aware of that, right? I, don't, so I, I, I know you can't. Yeah. It's hard to, like, self-regulate. Because I, I, I'm probably the least happy now. Not, maybe not the least happy I've ever been. That's just a bit depressing. But I was far happier when I was fucking flat broke and I was 22 going out, getting pissed every weekend. It's mad that you look back at that because I can very much relate to this, where even... Uh, so I was in limbo for about six years without a visa for Australia. So I was living in a country I couldn't live in. 
I had to get three month work visas every now and then. I felt like a plane that couldn't land. And now I've got my visa, got my residency, got a house, got a dog. Then I look back at something two years ago and I go, oh, I miss those days. I was like, hold on. I had anxiety for five years at that point. Why am I looking back now and looking at that? And I completely agree. Those nights out where you scrape together 50 quid for a night out and you got blasted. Now I could afford to drink wherever I want and I don't even want to. You know, yeah. like, there's this weird kind of uh, episodic thing that goes through life where suddenly you're like, why are the things that made me so happy before not making me happier now? But it's almost like you become a little bit numb to those 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 things as you go through time or you're just setting those peaks as being so big now.